All right, guys. Well, I'm back. I didn't necessarily know that I would be doing another video before the end of the World Cup, but I've got a couple of things that have come up that are directly related to American soccer, so I'm going to get to that. In the meantime, the World Cup is still going on. I just saw three amazing quarterfinal matches over the weekend. I'm recording this on Monday night. I don't know exactly when I'll put this out. It could be that you've already seen the first semifinal before you watch this, but on Tuesday, we do have Argentina and Croatia, and on Wednesday, we have France versus Morocco. Uh, it's, it's getting real, and the, the quarterfinal round was amazing. I hope you're still watching the World Cup. I hope you're, I hope you're enjoying it. But also, and more relevant to what I do here, is I hope that you did get excited uh, with, uh, about the United States team and that you started to learn a little bit of the players and you know become familiar with them and hopefully uh, you have sparked that there has been a spark of interest for you in continuing to follow this team and i am also going to try to nurture that and i'm going to keep following the u.s men's team um i didn't think that we'd have much to talk about while the tournament was still going on turns out that we do it's not necessarily good but before i get to that i mentioned in the last video that the first question the united states is going to have to ask themselves is do we retain greg berhalter as the manager or do we go ahead and make a clean break and try to find somebody else to manage this next cycle and for a while i mean i think it's still up in the air it's still very much up in the air and uh, i think my opinion is that it is time to make a change I, I generally take a positive glass half full approach, and I think Berhalter has, there's def, the glass is half full, and he definitely did a lot when you consider that we were basically uh, dead in the water, ground zero, scorched to earth in 2018 when he took over the job. And in four years, he got us to this knockout round of the World Cup. He did everything that we could have asked him to do. He got the job done. It was a good tenure, but the glass is still half empty. And I think it's going to take a different type of manager to maximize our potential at the next World Cup. I'm hoping for a, a foreign hire. I hope a big name. I want a big splash name hire that shows a statement of intent. As the news as as the news was rolling out, though, it looked like maybe they were considering an extension. I think they still are considering an extension. And um, I, it started to feel like maybe Berhalter would stay on short term, and then maybe but still there'd be a change coming sometime. Uh, relatively soon within this cycle. Then uh, some news came out, and uh, we started to learn some of the dirty laundry behind the scenes of uh, what was going on with the U.S. camp and during the World Cup. And it turns out there was there was something to the absence of, uh, or I should say the lack, of Gio Reyna's playing time. Um, it was ugly. Uh, the, both the coaching staff and his teammates were unhappy with the a level of effort he was giving in training and uh and it was dealt with internally whether it was dealt with the best way or not is open for debate but it was handled internally and it looked like that um that everything was was going to be fine you know properly like kept within the team and then burhalter made some remarks at a leadership summit i believe it was he understood it to be off the record there's been a statement to come out from from whoever published the remarks, they recognized that it should have been off the record also. And um, it basically, we, we all this stuff came to light. And it certainly, bare minimum, it didn't need to be aired publicly. We, we didn't know, we didn't need to know about this publicly. So I think there, it's an ugly situation that has blame to spread around. I, I can believe that Gio Reyna wasn't working hard enough he is someone who kind of has negative body language a lot of times on the field. We've seen him take himself out of matches before. And, um, but I also believe that Berhalter should not have aired this publicly, whether he meant to or not. He's the national team manager. He should know everything he says is news. And he sometimes he still seems surprised by the level of scrutiny given the national team. He's no longer with the Columbus crew. He's with the United States. Seems like he would know that. Um, he shouldn't have made those remarks. Geo should have worked differently. And as far as the mechanism of how they handled it internally, I think that's up for debate. I don't know if it's the best way to handle it. But what I think it did do is uh, create division in the locker room. I don't know how the, the manager can keep the team and keep the respect of his players and keep the locker room united or, or to be able to reunite the locker room with, with what he's done. 
Uh, Gio, to his credit, put out a statement today on his Instagram, taking accountability for his actions, um, confessing where there was culpability, also questioning why it was made public. I uh, imagine that things aren't exactly awesome between Gio and Greg Berhalter right now. And uh, there were a lot of fellow uh, um, national team players and those in the pool that didn't make the World Cup roster liking his comment, which makes me think they're all behind him, not necessarily behind Berhalter. I think this kind of closes the door on any type of effective second cycle for Berhalter. I think if there was going to be a change, if, if there was a question about a change, I think that that question has been taken off the table. I think this situation answers that for us. I would be shocked if he re-signs with U.S. soccer and also will be very pessimistic about how it could possibly proceed in a positive way. Hopefully, Reyna and Berhalter can work their differences out. Hopefully, the team can still rally together and find unity. I think it's going to, I imagine Reyna's going to have to prove to his teammates that he deserves playing time. I think he's going to have to be willing to put in some really hard training sessions with the national team without any expectation of getting into a game um, before he's got that respect. And I really don't know how Berhalter keeps the respect of his players right now. Unfortunately, it's that kind of drama going on. We'll have to see how it plays out. Um, the United States has announced uh, January friendlies. There's typically a January camp for the United States. It is not an internationally recognized FIFA window, which means that clubs around the world are not obligated to release players. And in January, all the European clubs are in season. And if they're taking, even if they're taking a winter break, the clubs expect their players to be with them. And so what happens is January camp ends up being mostly MLS based uh, players because that season, because that league is out of season. And it's typically also a time to bring in a second or third tier level player, give some new guys looks. Do not expect to see the big names from the World Cup in the January camp, unless maybe Reina needs to come in and, and, and start earning some respect on the training field, start earning his teammates respect. Maybe we see him included for that reason. But then again, he's playing in Germany and Germany's not obligated at all to let him go. So maybe that won't happen. But anyway, um, There'll be more to say about the January friendlies when January gets here. The, the opponents have been announced, Serbia and Colombia. And so we'll be interested to see who is the manager by the time that rolls around. Now, that is a situation where it could maybe still be Berhalter because he's probably not going to have the same players that he that he had with him in Qatar. Uh, so it's kind of an ugly, it's kind of an ugly scene, and there's blame to go around. We'll have to see how it plays out. But I can tell you this for all his flaws. Reyna is much more important to the future of the United States team than Burhalter is. And typically these this is a situation where the player's gonna come out, come out on top. He's still gonna be with the program going forward. The manager's a lot easier to replace. So we'll just see how it goes. The other thing that I need to talk about, and it's very sad, tragic news, it does affect American soccer. And that is the sudden passing of prominent soccer writer, soccer journalist, Grant Wall. If you've followed the World Cup at all, you've probably already heard about this. He collapsed suddenly right in the middle of the Netherlands-Argentina quarterfinal last Friday. He was live tweeting the game. Last I checked, his tweets from that game were still posted. Uh, he didn't make it to the end of the game. He uh, just collapsed right there. Um, there were reports that he was suffering from bronchitis and maybe some overstress that he had, he, had a, he had told people he was experiencing some tightness in his chest. I also read uh, from, uh, I think it was People Magazine or their website, um, the eyewitnesses uh, saw doctors trying to give him CPR, like it was a heart issue, and that, um, and that they were criticizing the stadium officials for not having any defibrillator, defibrillators around. Um, and so whether it's bronchitis, something cardiac related, I don't know. Um, but it just like that, he just dropped, he just dropped, and he's gone. Um, Grant Wall was somebody who did more, probably more than anybody to build a sense of community among soccer writers in America. He was a gigantic name and he was universally loved and respected. And he was someone that went out of his way to be nice, to be encouraging, to be helpful 
to uh, journalists or writers that were on their way up and that hadn't even le reached the level, the status where he was. He was always willing to share their work and always give them some advice. And you'll hear that from absolutely everybody. And I know that to be true. And I've, and he's, he seems to be, he seemed to be everywhere. He would show up on podcasts or, or on, or a guest columnist somewhere. And, um, it's just, it's just a, um, it's, it's, it's a shock and it's tragic. Um, if, if I, if I could only name one soccer writer in America, it would probably be Grant Wall. He's done very, very important work for a long time. And he's done a lot to give legitimacy to sports journalists that cover soccer and he's gone. And so the American soccer community is going to miss his work. There's no doubt about it. But on the other side of that is, is the human side where he has a brother and he has a wife and he has children that will never see him again. And my heart really goes out to his wife and his kids. You know, they, Gave him a hug, put him on a plane as he went to go cover the World Cup, and he's just not coming back. <clears throat> I can't imagine. I can't imagine what that's like for to say goodbye to your spouse or your father, not knowing that you were saying goodbye for the last time. Um, I'll I'll tell you that we've. We've recently had our own sudden loss in our family. And so I have a great deal of empathy right now for what they must be going through. And uh, we're very grateful for the work Grant Wall did and for the help he gave others. Hearts broken for his family and for everyone impacted by his loss. Um, yeah. My show that I want to do is focus. I try to keep it strictly American focused, American soccer. And typically I expect that to be about teams, about players, about managers, about schedules and opponents, tournaments, champions. But Grant Wall was a, it was, it was an integral part of the soccer fabric in America. He was, perhaps the biggest name in soccer journalism. And there are a lot of prominent writers, but Grant just seemed to be everywhere. And he seemed to have given every, helped get everybody started and, um, and everybody loved him. So anyway, I think I'm just gonna end it right there. Just, uh, you know, hold, hold your loved ones close. Let them know how you feel.